I mean, for us, we break it down non-league and, and, and league play. And in the non-league, um, we want to play a good, aggressive, competitive schedule and really just focus on the process and getting better um, day to day, game to game. Uh, hopefully get a couple wins and, and uh, you know, don't kill our guys' confidence. And, you know, so if you're able to get a few wins, uh, get, a, get a, you know, kind of a, a marquee win, uh, then, you know, and you get better through that process, through the non-league, um, you know, I think that's a successful non-conference schedule. And then the conference schedule is really where, you know, you have to be playing your best basketball. You know, the non-league, I, I think, is less about wins and losses. Although, you know, if you're in a position where you're one of the marquee teams in the league, and you're RPI conscious and those kind of things, then, then I think you, you really have to be a little bit more concerned with, with, with wins and losses. But when you're a program that's, that's just trying to find their way, I think you just try to take the non-league and focus on, are we getting better, figuring out your personnel, figuring out, you know, playing against some different styles, I think is really important in the non-league. And trying to find some, you know, I, I want to schedule some teams in the non-league that are similar to the teams we're going to play in the league, no matter what, you know, no matter what league you're in. And then you get locked into, you know, your conference play, and then that, you know, that final third it would be conference tournament time. Well, I tell you, with these new rules that they put in place, I, I really believe, like, we're, we're like an NBA season now, where NBA plays 82 games. We probably have more practices and, yeah. and less games, but our season length is now spread out through the month of July and August. So... I, I used to fragment it by, by three seasons. There's the preseason, and then there's your regular season, and then there's your postseason run. So I always went three seasons. Now I got to do the pre-preseason. So I've added another season to it, how you're going to attack it. And, you know, our guys going to want to hear your voice in July when they really got to hear it in March. And so, you know, there's a lot of strategy that goes in, I think, into it. And I've never lived with this new model of all these days. So I don't really know how it's going to be until I kind of live with it. So, you know, I'm interested to see how this year's experiment goes with the pre-preseason. You know, I, I think you, you're coaching your team all year. It's a, it's a, you basically have them for the year. It's 12 months now. And uh, I think giving your assistant coaches uh, more of a voice at certain times during the year, it, as you said, Steve, is – is key because in March they need to hear, they need to still be tuned into you. Uh, and then as you go into you know this season, starting practice early, we've decided that our max is two hours. It, once two hours hits, the horn sounds, practice is over. That's it. Um, and I think you know as we go forward, hopefully we'll be rested and ready to. Every three games is a whole new season. We do many seasons. And um, it worked well for us last year. I mean, we weren't overly successful in terms of wins, loss column. But, you know, I thought that just being able to break down the season that small, if you go two and one, you had a really good season. If you go, you know, one and two, then maybe what could we improve to get to two and one? Obviously, if you go three and no, you had a great season. So that's, that's how we broke it down. I think we break down our season uh, when the kids first arrive through our individual development program. And then the first time we're allowed to start doing team workouts, we'll do two team workouts a week. And then we have our, you know, start to practice schedule, focus on practices. But then, you know, we really look at it as uh, we split our non-conference uh, schedule into two, you know, first half, second half. And we do the same thing with league play, first half, second half of league play. But the biggest thing is once we start playing games, we're, we really talk about trying to have as many one game winning streaks uh, as we can. Um, I think when you start talking about trying to win three, four, five games in a row, kids forget about the task at hand. And all we're really concerned about is getting better every day. And when it's game day, one game winning streak. Okay, we won that game. Let's have another one game winning streak. Keep it real simple for our guys because I think young kids nowadays can look too far down the road and that could be dangerous. We segment our preseason practice then after we start our exhibition games. A lot of our, pre uh, our non-league games, I think some of the segments are just determined on where we're going, who we're playing. You know, I think there's a lot of natural breaks into it uh, with our semester break. Uh, obviously the games uh, after um, uh, our first semester, uh, right after finals, before our holidays, and then, you know, whatever we happen to have after that. But obviously the league 
uh, schedule uh, always starts a, a new and fresh season in earnest. So um, I think a lot of times, you know, the schedule determines that. But we certainly look every year at, at how our schedule is un unfolding and uh, try to segment best for our guys. You know, nationally,